What's going on y'all and welcome on in. Today let's talk all about Dien. So her banner just came out a day or two ago as of watching this and I want to go through the normal stuff we usually talk about with new characters even though she is a returning character for a lot of y'all I've been recommending you know to make sure you save enough bookmarks for her so now that she's officially here let's go through example builds I want to talk about why she's so strong right now at least because there's a lot of things that have changed throughout the history of DN's uh existence in E7 we'll go through example builds stats artifacts Molagora, all the stuff we normally do in our hero reviews and then of course if anyone is still on the fence we'll wrap up with you know is she actually worth your bookmarks guys huge spoiler alert she 100% is she probably is the number one soul weaver at the moment. Um, maybe that's debatable, but she's definitely up there, at least top three for sure. So without further ado, let's get into the DN review. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and open up DN's character sheet here. And of course I have the new Magic Girl DN skin. Let me know what you guys think about it. I think it's really, really nice. Definitely like it. And I'm glad they finally brought it out. If y'all didn't know, they've been teasing this artwork for Magical Girl DN for a long while. And they only just now brought it out in the Epic Pass. But I'm glad they finally did. Let me know if you guys enjoy it. The only thing I don't like is um, her English voice is a lot different than the normal one. But uh, I think most of y'all playing are probably on like Japanese voice. Let me know what voice pack you've been playing on. But let's go ahead and talk about... We'll hold off on the build just in a second, guys, because there's a lot of nuance. Uh, I definitely have some thoughts and recommendations on how to build her stats. But first, let's talk about why Dien is so good and what makes her such a good pick and why I really recommend you guys to pick her up right now while you can. So let's go th back through the history. Uh, for global release, at least, I think Korea is the same, but maybe Luna came first in Korea. But I know in global, because I started about a month into the game, a month or less, almost day one, and Dien was the first limited character that was available to us. And even from day one, even from month one, she was always, she's always been strong. Now, she's kind of fallen off, you know, between the years. But right now, at least, she is at her peak. And that is for a few different reasons. She's extremely meta, extremely powerful right now, guys. And let me tell you why. So, beyond the initial release of DN, where she's always been pretty good. Uh, to good, pretty good, and then maybe just okay. Now she's extremely good, and that's because she's gone through a few various changes. Number one, let's go ahead and start talking about she received a buff this year. I believe it was this year. Um, that gave her dispelling of two debuffs, and that's going to shore up one of her major weaknesses, which is, of course, she's not necessarily a, the best cleanser. Dispelling two debuffs means she's much more capable at it since she cycles so fast. This is actually huge for her doubling the dispel capability, but she still isn't treated as a major cleanser like uh, Destina or Montmorency, Hand Guy, uh, who is um, what Mediator Quare, DJ Bizarre. You know those full cleanse, uh, immunity up, or just massive, massive cleanse capability units she's not one of them but the fact that she has two now is obviously very very good and helped her a lot the second change is the addition of an exclusive equipment which smallgate used to not make ees for limited units but um they started doing that i think pretty recently maybe also with luna was the start and then dn got one eventually as well and if you guys notice here it does have the speed up which will tie into her third change but let me finish up the ee talk uh EE, her exclusive equipment having speed is obviously very nice. This is one of the best stats to have, especially on a cycling speed monster like Dien, which we'll cover later. Um, and then, of course, the effect itself, which, by the way, guys, we'll go into the EEs as well, specifically all three types. But the third one, I think, is by far the best, and it gives combat readiness by 15%. When using Blessing of the Goddess, which is her skill 2 barrier, you know, the one that got buffed with 2 dispels. So, she got a double dispel capability. She got an exclusive equipment that gave her up to 10 more speed, plus 15% copy readiness for every single unit in your team. On top of that, guys, what I was talking about with the speed is in real-time arena. So, this is only for RTA World Arena. This won't count for normal arena, PvE, or Guild Wars, but she does get a speed boost due to the frenzy changes that Smilegate implemented as sort of a way to kind of balance the game outside of like nerfs, for example. They started making changes in uh, frenzy, one of them being Soul Weavers get bonus speed. Now, this used to be higher, but she still gets a decent chunk of speed, so she'll actually in RTA be higher than whatever speeds that you have on your sheet but just keep in mind that is for rta only but the reason that's so important is she went through some significant changes and now she's just so 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 good at the moment you really really gotta look into picking her up Alrighty, y'all now that we talked about why dn is in such a great spot at the moment let's go ahead and talk about stat builds now this is going to be very nuanced as dn can run almost anything and it's really going to depend on your play style so let's take a look at my build here 
I have a two-piece defense set, guys. That is not definitely normal. I would actually rather have both health percent here with a lot of defense subs. But I had these kind of lying around. They have good speed, good Soul Weaver subs. So I definitely threw them on here um, as no one else was using them. Of course, that's going to be my style. So if we look at my stat line, I definitely prioritize a lot of bulk. And my speed, although decent, is not nearly as much as you'll see on some DNs. Some DNs will push 270, 280, 290, maybe even 300 with the RTA Frenzy in effect. But that's going to depend. Like, let's bring it back to what I said about play styles. I'm a tankier player. I, I don't ever try to contest speed. So I'm fine with 260. Now, 260 might still seem high. And that's just because I like to maximize her strengths, which is turn cycling. Every single one of her skills, if you get that exclusive equipment that gives 15% combat readiness, will have some CR push on her, meaning if you give her some speed, speed set, she is gonna just take turns like a madman. It's gonna be such a good time for you, maybe not for your opponent, but I really recommend having a good amount of speed on her. Now, if you are a faster player, if you're more of an aggressive player, so your other units in your squad are also built a little bit faster, and you think you can steal turns, and you can get to that 280, 270, to 90 range then sometimes casting that turn one barrier guys for that 15% CR push for your whole team will just win you the game outright so if you think you're a faster more aggressive player you're gonna want to speed tune your entire squad to benefit that so depending kind of identify that first and then pick your speed as that's probably the most um, what do we call it that's gonna be the most variant stat uh, between DNs. Otherwise, like I mentioned before, you can almost put anything on her. Let's go ahead and talk about effect resist here, guys. I have 100, which I think is the bare minimum you want to have on her, as we don't want to get provoke locked by random knights or any units, you know, that have kind of just annoying skill ones. Um, you could try to push 150. You'll feel a little bit safer there, but in my opinion, the difference between 100 and 150 isn't too important, and then we can maximize other stats like speed and bulk. But I wouldn't recommend going higher than 150. Like, maybe if you guys just have some cracked, really, really good ER, like, two-piece sets or just really good ER subs, you could maybe push 160, 170, 180. But, guys, just be careful going into, like, 200-plus range as you're starting to get into that territory where you're really trying to, you know, make sure you cover all your bases being, like, a main cleanser. I don't think, like I mentioned at the start of the video, that DN fits that category of a main cleanser as she only dispels two debuffs on only one skill. Where other soul weavers will have multiple cleanses on multiple skills that that dispel more than two debuffs, and will have either like inherent ER built into their kit somehow, like Destina. I just think there's better options for that role, and instead let's maximize our speed and other areas where DN will shine more. So that's just my preference, and honestly, sometimes I'll run even like two soul weavers, one of them being DN, one of them being a dedicated cleanser, for example. But just make sure you have at least 100 ER or some ER, so you don't get provoke locked. Random annoying debuffs, and then the rest I would definitely go for speed. Find out what kind of playstyle you are, and then the rest in a bulk. I promise, guys, the rest of the stats, you kind of just throw them around as long as she doesn't, she's not paper thin. Uh, once you find your speed and you have 100 ER, just go ahead and kind of fit to taste the rest of the stats that you have available uh, for your kit. If she is your premier Soul Weaver, like your number one Soul Weaver that you like to use, then definitely give her your best lineup. But guys, eventually you'll be having like three, four, five Soul Weavers that you need to have geared up. Um, so, you know, the gear will be split around just to divvy it up. And um, this is the kind of the stats. Make sure you look at speed, 100 DR, rest in a bulk. That's all you got to worry about. Okay, boys, let's go ahead and talk about skill enhancements. This is going to be very fast. She's a great, gracious growth target because pretty much you're going to want to max out skill 2 and skill 3. If you had to skimp on something, skip on uh, skimp on the skill 1 if you're strapped for molas. Um, but I would recommend trying to get the combat readiness as, you know, that is part of her kit. It's what makes her so good. All that CR cycling. Um, Grace of Growth is good, though, because it'll max out the skill 2 and skill 3. I wouldn't skimp on either of these. Definitely get the minus 1 turn cooldown in both, and you really want that berry strength as well. So if you have to strap, uh, skip molas, just skip the skill 1, but get the combat readiness eventually. After that, let's move into the EE. So, of course, guys, try to craft as high of a speed as possible. I would definitely recommend crafting a perfect one, as speed is very important to her kit. And you're going to want to make sure you get the third one, boys. This is pretty much for 95% of y'all watching. The only choice, as I talked about how good this is, sometimes it'll determine a match if you win by just cutting your opponent with that push. And it just gives the most value by far. 15% for every single ally, including herself. The skill one is the only other option, maybe, if you would like to run that counter set plus Celestine, which if you don't know, Celestine gives healing based off when you auto attack or skill one. So maybe this could be kind of good if you like that style, but it's really just for those players that play off meta or want to be special. The skill, the other skill two one here, guys, is not even worth it. Barrier is just getting worse as the game goes on, and 10% is nothing compared to 15% for every single ally. 
let's now let's move on to artifacts guys i'll go through my three selections here there's probably a bunch of different artifact choices as soldiers have a lot of different options so if i leave one out guys don't think it's not an option and in fact leave it in the comments if you think it's also worth mentioning but let's go ahead and talk about my three here rod of amulets number one since the start of the game this is what enabled her to heal when there weren't other artifacts out yet it is it gives a huge amount of single target healing to the lowest health 24 percent if you have it maxed after using a non-attack skill so her skill two and skill three which she can spam out uh, this is just really really good it's a standard artifact which a lot of y'all may have access to it's been around a lot it's been around forever and it's been in the powder shop a lot you probably have one lying around if you don't have it though um, and you want to play that speed demon style guys maybe consider Magaraha's tome this one used to be more popular when she had even more speed from the frenzy changes but I still think it's a great option if you like to play super super fast as imagine having 80% combined combat readiness on her skill 3 even more on the skill 2 um, this just really really accentuates her speed style just keep in mind you will have no actual healing if you do take this artifact for Dien so she may not be able to sustain a team if she's your, your only uh, soul weaver last but not least guys and this one is a limited arty so I apologize if you missed out on Amelia's guardianized crystals this one though guys is absolutely insane and the next time it comes around you have to get one okay it is so valuable even though like the increased effect resistance is really nice for any soul weaver um, and even though 15% at plus 15 may not seem a lot compared to Rod of Amaryllis, um, the fact that it happens, it's the, it's the way it works is why it's so valuable. The 50% or less out of turn activation once per turn, it can proc. Just trust me on it, guys. In an actual PvP match, it is so, so nice to be able to interrupt your opponents from sometimes securing a kill. And it just gives a lot of bonus healing on top of the increased ER. So try to pick one up if you can. If you do have one lying around, consider it. It is good on pretty much any Soul Weaver out there. Um... All right, guys, with that being said, let's go ahead and move into her own artifact. So I'll go to the summon page here and let's go ahead and look at Unfading Memory. So this actually didn't start with Dian on her first release, kind of like Luna didn't start with Draco Plate. It was added later. Let me just break it to y'all. Super simple, guys. This is artifact has been garbage from the start of the game. And I still think right now it's just not even worth it with more artifacts coming out like Guardianized Crystals. Uh, Unfading Memories is just think of it as an area of effect rod, rod of Amaryllis in a game where right now at least um, we don't really there's way more single target damage than AOE and the fact that we need all our um, you know we need our entire team to be taking damage to get the full value out of it I just don't think it's ever worth it it's never been used since the start just trust me on this one boys you can skip it. You don't need to grab it with powder. The only thing, take note of this, is it is a limited artifact, and Smilegate has shown, they have shown that they will buff limited arties. They will buff underused and underpowered artifacts. So if you want a future proof, maybe grab one copy just in case. Otherwise, if you pick up DN early, you want to save all your bookmarks, all your powder. I have a copy, guys. I've never even looked at it. I've never even thought of using it. It's just not really a great artifact, even even more so nowadays that we have more arties out there. Okay, so the only reason you'd pull for it is the future proof in case they buff it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap it up there. Go ahead and pull for DN. Trust me, you'll enjoy her. She's going to be so good for you. Almost every single player can make great use of her. I'll say even every single player watching will make great use of her, PvE and PvP. So enjoy. Let me know how your summons go. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out, everybody.